I am a paleontologist by training, which means I study fossils. I'm a, what we call a vertebrate paleontologist, so I study fossils of things with backbones. And paleontology is just studying past life. Um, it may be really old past life, uh, like four billion year old algae, or somewhat newer, like the uh, 340 million year old sharks here, or 10,000 year old bats. We're trying to put uh, pieces, trying to put that puzzle together of the, you know, the evolutionary tree of what happened, especially with our, like the shark teeth fossils, we're trying to see the evolution of the different sharks through different time periods. Because in the cave, you're able to see different layers of different, which means different time periods. And we're not talking, you know, like a hundred years between each layer, we're talking millions of years between each layer. And so we can truly try to put these pieces together. Uh, but also it allows us to just simply find new species. And just to, like I said, just put that tree of life together. These limestones that we have here are about 340 million years old. They were formed in the uh, bottom of a shallow sea. And as the mud accumulated on the seafloor, so did fossils, including sharks dropped teeth, sharks occasionally died and fell into the mud, uh, were buried. All that mud got compressed and became this limestone. And then millions and millions of years later, hundreds of millions of years later, the cave forms in this, and it happened to expose sharks in this section of the cave. Over 70 species of sharks and fish that we found here. Um, and we know at least five, possibly more, are completely new to science. They're sharks that nobody's found anywhere else in the world yet. And we are working on describing and naming those. The first one has come out, and uh, that, that's our Strigolotus uh, tullisonae. It was named for a guide here at the park, Kelly Tullison, who has been an instrumental player in our uh, volunteer group who has been finding sharks throughout the cave. And teeth of the Tullison shark has, it was described based on teeth. So some of our sharks have a look like what we see in modern ratfish. And then there are teeth that look similar to the types of teeth you find in modern stingrays or skates that eat hard things on the bottom of the uh, seafloor. We know they're not from animals that are closely related to modern uh, skates and rays, but we suspect their body form might have been similar that has a more uh, ray-like look in terms of the teeth, and we think the animal had a more ray-like look as well. What we do is we actually use uh, dental and surgical tools, actually, it's really cool to get the specimens off the wall without us actually touching it. And we don't grab the fossils when they come out. We let them fall into a little conical tube, uh, which is just a little test tube, because we don't want to touch anything at all. That is the major thing. You want to leave it as, un as undisturbed as possible. Being involved with this shark research has been incredibly exciting. Um, I remember actually back in around 99, uh, while I was working on the uh, more modern fossils here, uh, some of the guides let me know, oh, there's a place you should look at that has a hunk of shark cartilage. And I remember going there and uh, being amazed at the preservation that there was this part of a shark jaw preserved in the cave. But because I worked on this younger material, I didn't recognize how important that shark fossil was. Then uh, around 2015, 
the Park Service was doing an exhibit on fossils from caves. And they asked about uh, all the different cave parks to send pictures of cool fossils in caves. And most of our fossils are either small pieces of animal like a small, uh, a leg bone of a vampire bat or a small piece of a saber-toothed cat. Um, but we knew we had this, this weird piece of shark uh, uh, cartilage, this shark jaw, and he was just absolutely amazed uh, at that preservation and that that was there. And I was so excited that we were able to uh, find something that had that much significance. And even as a paleontologist, I failed to recognize how much significance it had. I knew it was a, a, a really cool fossil, and that's why we included it as our, our entry in uh, fossils from caves. But from that, all that I've, I, it's been uh, so amazing, and it's been an honor to be involved with this set of research that is found that Mammoth Cave has this this whole dimension of importance that until around 2018, 2019, I had no clue that Mammoth Cave had this special material in it. Personally, this is just a way for me to get that real world experience so that I can actually, because you know, as a biologist or just as a scientist, you know, you're trying to look for that new thing, that undiscovered thing. And you know, going into these caves, uh, there's a lot of untapped potential of, you know, witnessing something new, something that you know I've never been seen before. Like you see it for your eyes. It's just, it's a, it's a huge experience for me.